so I wanted to do a October reads uh, wrap up. So um, the first seven, I'll just kind of like put like right here because they're all a part of the same series. If you haven't watched my vlog uh, based on the Night Huntress series, I did a video on that. Um, so we have Halfway to the Grave, One Foot in the Grave, At Grave's End, Destined for an Early Grave, This Side of the Grave, and then we got One Grave at a Time, and then we have the last one, which is not showing on my freaking thing here. Uh, I have to, sometimes I have to change it up. Like either date updated or date add, you know, when it comes to Goodreads. So stupid. Let me do date added. Yeah, Up From the Grave is the seventh one. Now, I, I liked all of them with the exception of One Grave at a Time. That was the sixth book in that series. Was not a fan of it. I gave it two. I explained my reasons of why I ended up giving it a two in my vlog if you haven't checked that out. So those ones there um, I had a good time with. And then the next book that I ended up reading uh, was Cupcakes for My Orc Enemy. I ended up giving this a three. Honey Phillips is definitely one of those authors where she's kind of hit or miss for me. So it all depends on what it is. So this one here we have, um, the characters are Alara and Grandar. So yeah, it was a 3.5. Um, this one here, I felt like was very much lust based first. If you are the type of person where you don't mind lust base, you know, you, you like, if you're more into like erotica and you like more of the sex over the relationship type of thing. You might like this. That's what it felt like to me. It felt like more lust based than anything else. So this one here, um, I said, Alara is instantly attracted to Grandar, but because he's been hurt in the past with another human female, he is reluct reluctant to get involved with Alara. So I said, this author loves the term sugar for the nickname of the heroines. I said it was less annoying than the troll book. You know, last book I went and read last month was like another Honey Phillips one. It had to do with a troll. And kind of like it kind of deals with the same area, but this is a different series than the other one. So it kind of makes it confu confusing, Honey Phillips. That's all I'm saying. It kind of makes it confusing because these ones here have the same type of characters. They're like the same characters from that different series. The troll one is the first book though in a different series. So it's kind of confusing. Um, so this one here was like, he was very reluctant to get involved with her because he was involved with another human who basically cheated on him and treated him like shit. Uh, she also used him because she basically used him for his recipes because he was the one that had the talent and the woman, human woman had no talent. And so she stealed basically all of his recipes and just wanted to go and be famous. And when she didn't get famous, she'd try to crawl back to him. Um, and so Alara is, she just moved into the town, which is like I said, the same town as the other series, kind of makes it confusing. Um, she moves into this town and he's the baker that, that works next door. She ended up buying this coffee shop and so she's trying to like be she's more of like the sunshiny character he's definitely more of the grump and so she's trying to kind of like butter him up but like I said it definitely felt more lust based because the first thing he noticed about her was her ass bent over and then he's like he'd like to get in that ass and to me I was like hmm maybe get to know her a little bit first like personality that would be nice. So yeah, to me, it definitely felt more lust space. And I don't always like it. I think it depends on the type of story you're giving me. Because some I can, I can accept. Some I can accept. Other ones, no. I'm like, I want a more of a cozy feel with this. I want it to be more cozy. I want the characters to build with a relationship and then have it get like kind of lust space. And then, you know do the hanky panky. Um, so yeah, I, I gave it a three. Eh, it was okay. 
So the next one I end up reading, this one's called Tip Through Through Time by H.M. Jones. I liked this one. It was really cute. It was very short. It's a very short story. It did not, it, it was only 37 pages. So, I mean, if you want to get through a short book, this one is short, 37 pages. It was so cute, though. I really liked it. So this one here, we have the characters of Tanya and Milo. So I said, this was bittersweet and it made me a little sad at the end. Um, so I said, Tanya goes to a haunted house and meets Milo. I said, he shows her around the house and the small town he lives in. So Milo is definitely a gentleman. The way he acts, he definitely acts like more, maybe you would see from another time, you know? And so I thought it was a sweet short story, but it was also sad at the end. I definitely wanted more because it kind of has this bittersweet ending, you know? So she goes to this haunted house, if you get my drift, um, haunted house, and she meets this man named Milo. And so he's showing her around the town. And the town looks very, you know, the setting is set in like the 1800s or so. And then ghosts, things like that. I'm not going to say anymore, but like I said, it was kind of bittersweet. It was really sweet at the end, but I was like, oh, you know, like I really wanted more. And there was something to happen that was like, kind of made me sad, you know? So I'll just say that. But it was still really sweet. It was still a good, it was still a good little story. And I would check out more from this author. She only has two ratings, mine's included, on this book. There's only two ratings on this. Um, so if you want to read a book that not a lot of people have read, there you go. You know, tip through, tip through, through time. It was cute. It was cute. I did enjoy it. But it was, like I said, a little sad at the end, you know. So the next one I read and I wasn't really a fan of, uh, this is Shea Sanders. This is Trick. It's an erotic novel. Erotic is definitely the key term we have to go with here is erotic. So this one here, like I said, I gave it a three. So it says Donald and Tyra go on a date that doesn't quite, it doesn't go quite as planned. And that was a plan all along. So this one here is, was like a, I think it was a blind date or something. I think that's what it was. Yeah, it, it was a date gone wrong. Yeah. But like I said, I wasn't really feeling it. It was too lust based. Like it, it was just wham, bam kind of thing, you know, really quick. And for some of those stories, like novellas, they don't, don't really work because you really want something to like more whet your appetite. And to me, it wasn't really this, you know, it wasn't really this. So I wasn't really a big fan of it. Um, the next one that went along with that series, because it was Trick and the Nurse Treat, this one I didn't like at all. Didn't like at all. Um, I wasn't into this at all. I gave it two stars. This one here. Um, at the beginning, there's there's talk of political figures. So I would say that if you're not into politics in your romances or erotica, you may want to skip this. Because the characters were wearing Trump and Melania costumes. And everyone was basically saying like it's cringe so you kind of know like the side that this author is on politically and like I said when I read when I read books I don't want politics in every fucking book that's not what I'm looking for keep your political leanings out of your books because that's not what I'm here for so you know I'm not even I'm not I wouldn't consider myself a Trump fan either I'm like in the middle you know I don't hate the guy but I don't love him you know <laughs> so to me it's like I just know of Trump is like you know he had a, has a lot of money and he had like how many dip businesses and a lot of stuff owns hotels different things like that has been in movies things like that was on like what, what was that show called again The Apprentice I think I never really got into the show and then he was our president for four years. So, I mean, 
I don't really care. But uh, they definitely, you know, the author definitely had a political bias in here. And like I said, I don't like political bias. I don't care whether you're left-leaning, right-leaning, what have you. I don't give a shit. Um, just leave it out of the books. So that was at the beginning, and I was like... Mm -hmm. And then this book kind of reminded me of, there was that book years ago that everybody was like fucking hyping up and I ended up like reading part of it. And I was like, oh, DNF, DNF, hard DNF, where, what the fuck was the name of it again? It had something to do with baseball, where the guy's wife was using his like sentimental baseball bat to knock down the wall in their own fucking house that she kicked him out of because she wanted a divorce because he's not pleasing her because she didn't tell him what she liked or disliked in the bedroom so how the fuck is the guy supposed to know what you need in the bedroom he's not a fucking mind reader so that's kind of remind me of this this here was like the wife was all buck wild and shit you know uh she definitely got around and then the husband was very vanilla. So in order to please his wife, which I'm like, why the fuck you get married? You know, why did you get married? Why did you have kids? You know, it's kind of like at the beginning of like, oh, well, he knocked me up. Why aren't you using fucking birth control if you don't want to get knocked up with some dude's kid and decide to keep it and marry him? That's what it seemed like to me. And then the woman who was like their sex person, who was like with them and all that stuff. She knows more about the woman than the husband does. That tells me the wife told him fucking nothing, nothing of her pleasure. You think that he can't handle it? He fucking married you, bitch. You think he can't handle it? Fucking tell him what you like. So it's like, just cause a guy's vanilla doesn't mean he's not gonna be open to like other things, you know? And so I was like, I really dislike this couple. I don't really give a fuck about their marriage. And the whole like thing of like, oh, well, I was doing all this stuff. And it's like, girl, come on, come on. So yeah, I really disliked that one. I did not like it at all. I was like, the wife did not fucking tell her husband on not a fucking thing about what to do to please her. And then they're going to the sex thing. And I'm just like, hmm. Okay, yeah. Mm. And it it just really did not feel like true, like Halloween-ish. Especially like, okay, they had the costumes at the beginning, but I'm like, that was it. And then they're going to this like sex place that I was just like, okay. So I'm like, I've read twice from that author. No, thank you. I don't want to read anymore. I'm good. So the next book I ended up reading that I ended up enjoying, this was Orc, orc me baby one more time <laughs> if you're a Britney Spears fan uh orc me baby one more time uh this is Monsterville USA um so this is Ava Ross I will try other Ava Rosses because I did like this book so I will check out other books by her so we have Gunner and Riley so this one here it's an interesting story because the hero Gunner is an orc but he wasn't born an orc he was made, made one, he was made into an orc by a doctor, him and his sister. And I was like, huh, okay, so he used to be human and now he's an orc. That's interesting. I like that. I like that. So I thought it was interesting. And so I said, he's been crushing on Riley for a while, but he's too shy to ask her out or for her to think that she would actually like him because of him being an orc. He thinks that, you know, she'd probably consider him more of a monster type of thing. And he's a blacksmith. You know, he works as a blacksmith. Um, so said so Riley has been crushing on Gunner for months as well. And in order to stop her meddling grandma from setting her up on a date, she decides to ask Gunner if he is willing to pretend to be her boyfriend. He agrees, of course, you know. So, so this was a fun and quick novella. But the one thing that did annoy me was the fact that both of them were really insecure and they constantly repeated in their heads, oh, they might not, they may not want me. And I said, I kept thinking that if they were willing to touch each other's naughty bits without getting grossed out, then they needed to stop questioning each other's feelings. 
I said it was frustrating, but still an enjoyable read. So that's the thing that kind of like, I, why I didn't give it a five star is because they were constantly were questioning their feelings toward each other. Like her thinking in her head, I'm not sure he likes me. And then him thinking, I'm not sure she likes me. And I'm like, if you're willing to touch each other's naughty bits, then yeah, you like each other at least sexually. So that was the frustrating part with that. It was just that, just constant questioning. And I was like, stop, stop. You're overthinking. You're overthinking this. And then her grandmother was a bit annoying. It was, she was a bit annoying. But the rest of it, like I said, it was really cute. It was a really cute novella but it was just a little bit that just kind of annoyed me with the book so then i hate you goodreads i hate you i fucking hate you i hate this fucking app jesus so i ended up reading um, the Maven Feast, which is, it says the Wheel of the Year, book one. So this is by CM Nacosta. I, I say Nacosta. I don't know if it's Nescasta. I don't know. Ugh, I wish authors didn't have fucking confusing names. So I said, most of this novella didn't even have the couple communicate. I said, if they did, it was a few words. I said, once they were near each other more than a few seconds, he was tying her up on his web because he's a spider kind of hybrid thingy and have his way with her. I said, I wanted to see the buildup of the relationship and they were separated throughout most of the novella. So there wasn't anything with them getting to know each other. It was mainly her talking about, she's like a witch or something and like all of the stuff that goes along with being a witch, the time of year, uh, doing things with the other witches, like your coven and all that stuff, and her kind of being ostracized out of it, so she was alone. And then he comes along, and he decides to rent out her room, and he's very sickly looking. And so once he's up there, she starts having these like erotic feelings, like erotic stuff, like she's starting to get like you know turned down and stuff, and she's not wondering why, and it was because of his whatever it was up above, above that he was basically essentially going into heat. And so she was feeling that. And so they got together, but it wasn't only, it was like maybe like the last 80 or 90% of the book. Most of the novella, which like I said, it is a novella. Most of the novella was just her kind of going through her day to day thing and then like feeding him and leaving food for him and all that stuff for him to eat. But it was very boring. It was very boring. Now let me fix this. Oh, good reads. I swear you are going to be the death of me. You irritate the fuck out of me. Oh, I hate good reads. But yet I keep using it because that's the only thing I'm used to. Like the there's that story, the story graph. I'm not a really big fan of it. I just don't like the setup and all that stuff. And I forget to use it all the time. So the last of what I read is an anthology. So this one here was supposed to have 14 stories in it. It was supposed to have 14. But I don't know if my update got messed up or something. Because when I, I had pre-ordered it and... When it finally went live, something happened to where you had to update it on Amazon. And so I updated it and all I got was 13 stories. So I don't know what happened to the other story. So the first one is, um, it's basically, it's creepy court. It's a monster mall. So humans go into this mall. They don't realize that there's a whole bunch of monsters around them. Some of them discover and others don't discover so the first one is Praying or Playing Mantis by Cleo Evans. I really like this one. I would definitely check out more from Cleo Evans. So the characters are Jamie and Mantis. So it said the plot is a female human stays late at a mall arcade and Praying Mantis monster wants her for his mate. So the trope is breeding kink and insta lust. So I gave it four stars. 
Like I said, I want to go in any more than that because they are novellas. And some of the novellas are like shorter than others. It all depends on the story. Um, so this one here, I did like it. Uh, the second one is Frankie's Funhouse by Beatrix Hollow. So it's a pizza parlor. Uh, it's also a human and animatronics sex. <laughs> yes, you heard me correctly. Animatronics sex. Mm -hmm. The characters are Ramona and Frankie. So the plot is the woman goes to work at a knockoff Chuck E. Cheese and one of the animatronics wants its way with her. Um, it was too weird for me. I gave it three stars. Also, there's other things involved with it. I don't know why the animatronics works the way it works. So I don't want to give that too much away. So number three is Lost and Found by Vera Valentine. This is a male male romance. Um, this was a, he's a Nyx water spirit and it's a human plumber. So the characters are Ethan and Ryan. So the trope is Ethan works at a mall and the water fountain springs a leak and the plumber comes in to plug Ethan's hole. Five stars. So number four is Fed After Midnight by Latrexa Nova. It's a male, female, male. Uh, the trope is friends to lovers. Billy finally gets William to confess his feelings toward her. Uh, towards her, but she gets more than she anticipated. So the characters are Billy, William, he's a Mogwai, Mogwai, I think I'm uh, pronouncing that correctly, and a Liam. Um, if you ever watched uh, Gremlins as a kid or a teen or whatever age you watched it as, just think of that, you know, what happens with uh, Mogwais after midnight and if they eat, if they get wet, that type of thing. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so the next one, I ended up giving it a DNF because I really was not feeling the story. So there was play by Sabrina Day. Uh, couldn't keep track of the story. Wasn't interested in me. So I ended up uh, passing that and going on to the next one. So the number six was the Monster of Dark Spell Comics by S.J. Sanders. So we got the characters of Pashar and Fanny. So it's a nightmare demon and a human. Uh, comic book store. He owns it. So I said Fanny sneaks into a comic book store in the mall and Pashar catch, catches her and decides to use her as his slave. So I gave that four stars. I definitely will check out more by S.J. Sanders because I really like the story. I like that. Next one was Creepy Pasta by Evangeline Priest. It says in the, that it's the story after the sixth story, but my copy didn't have it. This is the one that was missing. Um, e I even updated it on Amazon. There was nothing there. So, like I said, if they just if they do decide, I will say if they do decide to um, redo these um, novellas and have them singular instead of all in one anthology, um, I'll see if I could try to find that creepy pasta and read it if I could find the novella for it, but it was not in the anthology. It, not in my copy. It wasn't. So other people, I think, were able to access it. So number eight was Dreadful Things by Maeve Black. Uh, the characters were Zoe and, or no, Zero. Zero and Posey. So it's high school crush, fake dating. He's a ghoul and in a band and runs his pop culture store with his ghoul bandmate. Posey is a human and gets hired for the seasonal position. So I gave it about three and a half stars. This one here was a little bit insta-lust, but I will say like, because they knew each other, him more than her, she kind of recognized him. Um, he looked more goth in the store. Um, and his type of thing of like, him and his bandmate, they didn't eat, I wouldn't say they ate body parts, they ate hearts. They ate human hearts. So that's how they were able to kind of like, you know, stop themselves from eating humans, <laughs> was eating, you know, human hearts. Um, so the next one was Vampires Totally Suck by C. Rochelle. So the characters were Star Max and Damon. This was a male, male, female. Uh, sizzling Discourse Goths Clothing Store, that's what it was called. So we got Max and Damon our vampire couple looking to add in a third to their relationship. So I gave it a three. I wasn't like, I liked Max, but I felt like Max was a little bit more predatory towards Star and Damon because he met Damon when he was very young. And so they, this, they were a couple for a very long time before, I, before they decided to add in that third. And I kind of felt like Max was a little bit predatory. That's how I felt. 
It was definitely felt more predatory to me than a relationship, you know? I, I liked Damon. I liked Damon with Star, you know? They almost could have, like, just ixnayed out the, you know, the Max A, you know? Uh, so that's kind of, like, how I felt. I just, I don't always dig those relationships where it's, like, male, male, female, that type of thing. I don't really dig them, you know? So it's got to be done well. It's got to be done well where I don't feel like someone is definitely going to be missing out, you know? It feels like a third wheel. You feel like the third wheel. So, um, the number 10 was The Best Boy by Ren K. Morris. I would probably check out more by Ren K. Morris, even though I gave this story a three. Uh, so the characters are Tracy and Jay. So he's JJ. So he's a wolf shifter. This is also a Faded Bates one. So Jay shifts into a wolf and gets adopted at a local chef shelter for strays. So it's called Twisted Whisker. So um, the woman's ex-boyfriend was abusing and was stalking her. I felt like it was too insolust. So he essentially, he essentially is kind of like he's an enforcer for his pact. And he kind of feels a bit worn out. So he kind of like wants to take a little bit of a break. So he decides to chill out at this um, shelter for the dogs one of his wolf shifter pack members uh runs the uh runs the shelter so the guy's like you know this is embarrassing right and so he's like i'm not gonna say anything go ahead and go in the back go chill out and pretend you're a dog you know so um not long after he's kind of sitting there he senses his mate and the woman comes through the door he senses she's his mate, so he decides he's going to pretend to be a dog. Then her stupid ex shows up and tries to hurt her. And he turns into full wolf man. So, yeah. Like I said, it was a little too insta-lust, but I still thought it was a cute story. Um, number 11 is The Phantom of the Theater by L.M. Drew. I liked this one. This was very interesting. Uh, so it's it was called Creepy Court Cinema. And so the characters are Deborah and the Phantom. We don't know his name. So Deborah is trying to discover who keeps breaking the projectors at the theater and a monster who becomes corporeal through fear and screams. I give it a four star. Again, he becomes physical solid through screams and fear. So it was very interesting. Um, that was a very interesting story. I would have wanted a little bit more from it. I will say that. I wanted a little bit more, but I gave it four stars because I, I did enjoy that. So the next one was The Good Char by Y.D. Lamar. So this one here has the uh, characters of, I think his name is Disick, Disick, and Kimmy. So it's a hot, hot dog eatery in the mall that sells human flesh for consumption. So he's a demon and she's a human. I wasn't a fan of the heroine. She was too happy. She also felt very immature to me. She was doing a lot of things that I felt like was very immature. I wasn't a fan of it. And I really didn't understand why he liked her. You know, and then also her parents were annoying as fuck. They were annoying as fuck. I'm assuming either they, like I gave it a three star. Their last name was NGO. So like, no. Um, they might be Vietnamese. I'm thinking they were Vietnamese. I'm going to say Asian because I could be wrong. But I'm thinking they might be Vietnamese because my, I had a friend years ago. Her last name was NGO and she was from Vietnam. So it was definitely an Asian-esque type of lady. And like I said, she felt very immature to me. She, I guess it was like 19 or 20, but she felt like 12. It, it just, she had like this overly excited and just felt very immature to me. Did not feel like that mature 19 to 20 year old you would see, even though not all 19 or 20 year olds are very mature, but I'm just, it, she just felt very kiddish to me. Just not a fan of her and her parents were annoying because every time she tried to explain things to her they were like oh my god are you pregnant did you kill somebody and i'm like 
what? How could you even get to that point where you would think your child killed somebody? You raised your kid, right? Why would you automatically assume that she killed somebody or that she was knocked up? I was like, what's wrong with these parents? I was like, what the fuck? Oh, I did not like the parents at all, at all. So that's why I ended up giving a three because she, her, uh, annoying, annoying. So number 13 is Mall Rat by Ashley Bennett. Wasn't a fan of it. It was Jackie and Rhonda. So this was a female female romance. So it's a creepy court roller door roller dome. She uh Jackie works at the roller dome roller dome, and Rhonda is a rock star rat, <laughs> a rat. <laughs> so yeah, I was like, eh. I'm not attracted to rats. So I just yeah, I was. It was weird. It was weird. And I've already read Ashley Bennett before and I'm not really a fan of her work. I don't know why. I just don't really dig it. So the last one I ended up um, reading, this was the one I initially got the anthology for, was this author. So this one's Don't Eat Your Human Boyfriend by Lily Main. So we got the characters of Elliot and Ricky. So it's a male-male romance. So the place, the restaurant they work at is called Broth with a Bite. So he's a, uh, Elliot is a ghoul and Ricky's a human. So it's a male, male romance. I gave that five stars. I really enjoyed it. That was very sweet. Um, it was so sweet. And we have Elliot's this ghoul and, you know, he's kind of like, he's been working at the restaurant for like how many years? It's kind of like a two part two-part restaurant so you've got the human side that the humans work on and then they have no idea that the other um side of the kitchen that's closed off is where the ghouls make their ghoul food for to give to other ghouls so it's essentially human parts you know human body parts and um human flesh things like that so they think that the kitchen over on the other side is for people who have severe allergies so they had no idea. So it was essentially uh, Ricky starts working at the human part and Elliot bumps into him and Elliot's like immediately attracted to him. He's like, he is so cute. He is so cute. I want him, you know, like he's like, I want to eat him. But he's like, you know, I can't eat him because I'm attracted to him. So it was kind of like that where he's like, I want to take a bite out of him, you know, but just a little bite, you know, kind of thing. And so it was really cute. I really enjoyed that one. Um, but I'd have to say like, I gave the whole anthology like four stars but I have to say like most of the novellas I ended up hitting were like kind of three stars but there were like ones that I definitely would read more from those authors like you know especially I mean obviously Lily Maine I try to pick up like whatever she does I'm not impressed with Ashley Bennett I don't know why I will check out maybe more of the YD Lamar ones I might check out more from the author L. M. Drew, um, I think I definitely will check out more from that author. Uh, Ren K. Morris, I will. Um, not even going to bother with the C. Rochelle. I wasn't feeling that one at all. And um, I don't know about Maeve Black. I might check out another, uh, or might check out like a book from Evangeline Priest since I didn't, like, I wasn't able to read the novella. So I'll check out and see if I like that author's um, writing. Um, I really enjoyed S.J. Sanders, so I will check out more from that author. I really enjoyed that book, even though I didn't give it five stars, but, you know, I did really enjoy it. So there was like two male-male ones that were in this anthology I really did enjoy. It was the ones that were kind of like male-male-female I wasn't really a fan of, you know, so. But yet that's not really my trope. That's not the type of trope I like, you know, not really. But that's what I've read so far with um, October. Um, I This month I was really trying to buckle down and read like a good number of books um, for the month of October. Because it's, you know, it was spooky month and I this is like my, this is my wheelhouse. This is the month that I love celebrating is... October. So I really wanted to get in as many like spooky 
you know, type of things. I wanted to get in monster romances, things like that, you know, and I'm still going to read some like stuff in, in November. I don't care. I'm still reading some Halloween stuff in November. Now, Halloween doesn't end for me until like December, you know, so I'm like September, October, November, boom, spooky month. That's, that's, that's my spooky season, you know? Um, so I definitely going to check out more anthologies. There's another anthology I want to read in November that's, um, historical, but it's all spooky. Definitely want to check that one out. Um, but it's pretty much going to be pl me playing it by ear in November. And then hopefully in December, I can try to get through some, some Christmas ones. Christmas is not really my holiday. I'm more bum hum, you know, bum humbug, you know, bah humbug. I'm more of the bah humbug. I'm more of the Grinch. I really am not a fan of Christmas. It's not my month. It's not my month. I'm definitely more into spooky. So, um, with that, um, that's what I read. And I would have to say, like, for the most part, I did enjoy October. There were a few duds, but you win some, you lose some. But I'd say most, most of it I enjoyed. And I did, for the most part, enjoy the anthology, but there were some that, some of the stories that just didn't work for me. So there you go. But yeah, that's it for this video here. Have yourselves a good day. Take care of yourselves. Be kind to each other. Happy Halloween. <laughs> you know, and I will see you all on the next video. All right. Bye.